Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video and today we are going to be looking at the Trappist 1 system. So basically, if you didn't know, quickly go on Google today and you'll see uh, on Google there's like a picture of like something to do with space basically. So basically today, or like in the last like day, so in the last 24 hours, we discovered um, seven planets around a star which could all be Earth-like and have liquid water on them. So basically, what I've done is I've recreated that in Universe Sandbox 2. So here's our star and also here is it here is it again but here's this other name it's also known as two mass j2306 blah 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 you can read those numbers there if you want to but yeah that's the other another name for it but anyways let's get to the good stuff right here so here is the solar system that i have made so it's on its side like this that's just the way it first spawned in because when i got the star originally the star is already in the game um i hit um this button here where it said add planets to star and it added um, the B, yeah, B, C, and D to the system, but then it didn't add the other ones, so like E, F, G, and H. So I had to input them myself. And also, I've literally been on um, scavenging the internet to find out their exact sizes and radiuses and all that. So I've done it, and this is the system I've got. So basically, this is probably as close as the real one you can get in the Universe Sandbox, or we can pretty much simulate like I, every single value on the internet I've found I've inputted into the planets here so like their sizes the radiuses and then also like their orbits like how far they're away from the star their inclination all this stuff here but I've inputted it all to the best of my ability and it pretty much spent me like half an hour so yeah hopefully you like this video for the time I spent on it <laughs> I guess but anyways so let's go and check out some of the planets we're also going to be comparing them to Earth Venus, Mars, and Mercury, just to see like size comparison as well. And also, I think this star will make it into my size comparison for this year, so that'd be pretty cool. Keep an eye out for that. Second of August, no first, no first of August. I keep on forgetting. Yeah, first of August, 2017. I have a new size comparison, and this star will be in it. And trust me, this star is pretty small. If we compare it to say like Jupiter, it is very tiny. Look, Jupiter is almost the same size as this star, which is crazy. Like, literally, that's Jupiter right there. Like, this star is tiny. Like, if we compare it to the sun, the sun is huge. And compare it to Earth as well. That like, Earth is there. But anyways, let the system play out for a bit, actually, if you want. So, like that. So, there we go. There's the planet sim thing. These are all closer than Mercury is to the sun as well. Mercury would be, like, way out here somewhere. Because these are very, very close. See, the furthest planet... Where is it? It takes... Does it say, yeah, 20 days to go around the star, but Mercury takes about 88 days to go around the sun, so all these planets are way closer than Mercury is to the sun, which is crazy, because this is a, um, this is a red dwarf star, I believe, so it's basically like Proxima Centauri here, it's a little, um, a little smaller, so this is a very, very small star, it's known as a dwarf star, I believe, if you, um, search that up, but anyways, let's go into the chart mode, and we can view their sizes, so here we go, so the largest one, to my knowledge is G, so Trappist 1G, I'm just going to call them by the letters, I don't want to say Trappist every time, so we've got G is the largest, next up is F, then E, then B, and C obviously, H, and then the last one which is D, so D is the smallest one, now if we, um, let's just go out of here quickly, um, go to the orbit, so let's quickly add Earth, or Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, like really far so they don't affect the orbit, so Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and then we'll see how they compare with these planets, because they're all very, they're all Earth-like, like, if you've read the articles and stuff, they all say they're like Earth, so here we go, so here now we have G and H, or G and F, which is still the largest two, then, but here is Earth, right here, it says good old Earth, so it's pretty much fitting in with these planets quite well, we also have um, E again, and then there's Venus, so Venus and Earth are pretty much in the large sector, now we get to the smaller stuff, so... Here's all of the other ones like C, H, and then D again. But then we've got poor old little Mars and Mercury, which are way too small, and they just don't even compete with these large planets. So there you go, there's your little size comparison for the day. Right here. Um, but anyways, let's go out of there. Let's quickly delete um, Earth, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, like there. And let's go back to Trappist 1. So overall, I think this is a pretty cool discovery. Like, we haven't found anything this big in a while. Like, if you um, didn't know it, it was actually, um, I think it was the number one trending video on YouTube um, as of making this video. So, yeah, that's that, I guess. So, yeah, this is a very, like, breakthrough in science or astronomy, I guess. And me being uh, quite an astronomy geek, I, um, I found out about it as soon as I went on Google 
um, earlier today and I literally like I've got to make a video on this I want to be one of the first people on YouTube to make a sandbox video on this so yeah here we go I've done it so there's my system I guess like that's pretty much it like there's not really much else I can really say about it like I could bring up like the news article right here so it basically says Trappist 1 is an ultra cool dwarf star located 39 light years from the earth so it's um, within range I guess that's not too far away 39 light years it's not that bad but anyways this is um where is it yeah so they first discovered it in 2015 it looks like so that's pretty cool but then in 2017 like pretty much today they found four new planets so the reason why the four planets didn't spawn around the star when I hit um, all um, add planets to stars because they've only been discovered today. The game obviously hasn't updated in a while, so they wouldn't have been added yet. So I've added them manually and I have the simulation saved. So it's there permanently. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably one of the first people to create this on Universe Sandbox, hopefully. Hopefully I'll be the first to upload it, I don't know. But anyways, there's also a thing saying, um, yeah, they discovered four additional exoplanets. Uh, what else? And they're very large as well. They're pretty much earth size that's pretty cool and they also think that the Hatable zone so let's quickly get that up can we get that up? okay I don't know what that's all about I think this I think the game's kind of glitched because that's not right yes yeah, so the Hatable zone would be in between the C and the G planet I think I think it's somewhere here so in between C and G I think the Hatable zone is so the H is a little too cold and then like B is a little too as you can see it's 109 degrees right now so it's quite hot water should be evaporating on it pretty much so I put it in a nice orange color if you've seen like the picture for like the main trending video on YouTube you'll see that like I've tried to make the planets look like they do on like the article just to just to make things look a little nicer um yes yeah, go out of that quickly so if you want to have a quick look at them so here is B let's go to C now so here's C yeah I've tried to make my best um by making them look like the article I've also added some water on them just to make them a little more like realistic as well so here's D just get a good look at these they look pretty cool honestly if you ask me Here's E, that's quite a blue one, I don't think that was right, but I don't know why it's blue, probably because of the water, here is F, and then G, which is the most green looking one, so there we go, and then H, which is like the little smallest one, the icy one, the white one I guess, and there, there you go, let's go back to realistic mode, as you can see, like, it's pretty dark here as well, it's not the brightest, anyway, let's land on the surface of, um, which one should we go for, um, let's land on the surface of F, and then we can look up in the night sky and see if we can spot any of the other planets as well. Might, might as well have a little bit of fun while having a look around. So, here we go. So let's quickly turn off um, trails and labels and can we spot anything in the sky? Yeah, you can see there's one there, there's another one here. You'll probably get a lot of a clip, little eclipses here. You'll probably see this, them crossing the star, look, you can see there. So that is um, B and then this one must be C. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, this is a pretty cool system actually, look at this. Any more lying around, any other planets? Let's, let's put the view mode on um, background on, uh, where is it, solid black, so they'll be able to spot the planets easier, so there's one there again, so that's D, any other ones, let's pause it quickly, there's one just in the horizon there, wait, where's the surface, yeah, there's the surface, right, so there's one just there, that's G, so that's quite far away from this one, uh, where else, anyone else, it's pretty much pitch black, yeah, I'm pretty proud of this simulation, <laughs> if you didn't know, but anyways, Let's go, out, let's go out off the surface again, so as we can see, if we zoom out a bit, and if you pay close attention, you may be able to see little dots on the screen where the planets are. Let's put the orbits back on as well, so there you can see, there are the planets there. Um, so there's G. So if we go on H, let's see if we can spot all the other ones in the sky, maybe. So let's go to the British North Pole of the sky, I guess, and let's look around. So there's our star. Now can we spot the other ones? Okay, there's one there. Let's see. D. Anything up here? Nope. Right, let's go back down. Uh, there's B there. Anything else? They should all be along here where my mouse is. Oh, I can't even spot them. It's just so they're so far away from each other. Honestly, <laughs> may not seem like it, but they're still pretty far. They're all similar sizes. Remember, they should be quite visible. If we had like showing like Jupiter, it'd be it'd be visible easy. Like if we just zoom out quickly, like Jupiter, we'd see that very easy since it, how big it is. But anyways, that should pretty much be it for this video. There's not really much else to say. Like, we found a new solar system pretty much. We've got four new planets from the previous three we found before. So, yeah, there you go, I guess. I hopefully I'm the first guy to make it in the universe sandbox. I don't know. Right, let's go back to um, Milky Way Dark, the normal one. So there we go. Let's put our uh, rail or um, trails and labels back on. Let's just play it. So there you go. So hopefully you all enjoy this video. Leave a like if you want more. And, yeah, I guess, yeah.
enjoy enjoy the simulation while it plays, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yes, it's pretty much like in February 2017, astronomers announced the planetary system of the star is composed of seven Earth-like planets. So, all right, so uh, it says on the website here, so E, F, and G. So where are they? So E right here. So this one, F here, and then G, which is here. These are the ones in the Hatsball zone right now. And why is this one free? Let's put it back to 20 so it turns to water again. So yeah, these are these are the three which are probably the most likely to have... Um, like most likely earth conditions I guess so yeah there we go I guess so overall pretty interesting if you ask me hopefully we can eventually visit this system one day maybe this could be like I don't know sent like I don't even know like a, this would probably be a good place to set up our first colonies if we ever have a chance to travel out this far it's only 37 light years or whatever it was so can't be that far so this could, and since these planets are all relatively close to each other we could travel between them pretty quickly like as you can see the the closest one which is B that one is going around so quick, like if you were on the surface this, you could quickly launch a space probe and go to one of these other ones. So the main base should probably be on maybe B, I guess. It just, it'd have to be heat protected, because it is quite hot here. So, yeah, that's that, I guess. But since apparently they all may have liquid water on them, that brings up the question, maybe we could colonise all of them, right? If it's too hot now, that doesn't mean we can't, like, cool it down, I guess. There's, there could be, there's probably a way where we could cool the planet down. Like, if people are saying we can colonise Venus, then we can definitely colonise this, because Venus, as you know, is a lot hotter than this. Venus is around in the 300s, and if people say we can colonise that, then we must be able to colonise every single one of these. So there you go. See, this planet, H, right now, that is still warmer than Mars is usually at this point, so, yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. So, anything else on the website? I'm just having a quick peek. Just can, just love the love my simulation I made. And those are probably all tidally locked as well, so the same face probably always faces the star. So the same face of the planet, so it'd be like this. So let's quickly go to B quickly. Yeah, let's go into motion and hit tidally lock. So if we look at it now, this side you're looking at will always be in the sunlight. So as you can see here, the sun will pop out there any second. Yeah, there's the sun. See, the same side, which is this side, is always facing the star. That's what tidally locked means. And also, if we go to the star itself, you may be wondering, hang on, if there's a B, C, D, F, G, H and stuff, where is A? Well, if you didn't know, the star is usually classed as A, so it would pretty much be Tapist 1A. That, that, that would be, like, the main thing, because like, if we look at, um, say, like, some of the Kepler planets, like D, B, E, F, C, like, they're all just, like, they just number planets by letters, usually. They usually number exoplanets by letters after the star, so the star is always A, and any planets in order of distance are like B, C, D, all the way up to like H, I guess. Maybe it'd be cool one day if we find 26 planets, and then we'd have one for every letter of the alphabet. There's probably a solar system out there, like, just look how big the, the Milky Way is, like, look at all these stars, like, in the background of this simulation, like, there you go. There's a Milky Way, like, all those stars, one of them could have 26 planets around it, so we could fill up every letter in the alphabet. But anyways, enough of me, um... Enough of me just with my silly talk. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. And yeah, if you want more, leave a comment down below. If you think I um, can improve this simulation anyway, please tell me in the comments and all that good stuff. And yeah, please review like how well I did on the solar system. Overall, I think I did pretty good, honestly. Like the simulation's working good. None of the planets are getting ejected or anything like that. So overall, 10 out of 10, please. <laughs> please, yeah, so out of 10, 10 being best, 1 being worst. How well do I do in this solar system, I guess? So yeah. Anyways, like I said, hopefully you enjoyed, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.